Welcome back to Two Real Fans. We have an interesting video for you today. We're going to share 10 things that you can do to get your model railroad started now. One comment that I noticed on one of our videos was somebody saying, this is getting me motivated to get my model railroad started. And I've seen comments on a lot of train videos. David and I watch a lot of train videos online. Would you agree? Yeah. And a lot of the comments that you see in these videos, people are commenting, oh, I should really start working on my railroad or get started. So the most important thing, David, in a model railroad is what? To get something running. To get something running. So number one is to get something running now. David? A lot of people never get to the point of actually running a train. So that's the most important part of model railroading, is actually running trains. So whether it's a permanent layout or just something temporary, number one, get something running now. Number two on our list, we're not fortunate enough to have a basement. Most houses in Texas don't have a basement. So in our case, we're having to use some shared space at the moment inside one of the rooms in our house. And this is the space we have. Would have liked to have a deep, we have a fairly long layout, almost 19 feet long. And I would have liked to have had a deeper layout here, but that just wasn't gonna be practical. So we went through a lot of designs, uh, figuring out, okay, what can we do with this space? So figure out where your layout's going to be and determine what space that you're going to need. Number three on our list. Temporary layouts. What are, you, what are you doing back there? Well, I just noticed that you didn't put anything that blocked the train from crashing into me. Oh, well, it's not done yet. Oh. We did a temporary layout before we ended up putting up the bench work for this layout that we're working on. It's actually on another wall in this room. But even prior to that, we had a whole bunch of temporary layouts. So a temporary layout could be something that you're just going to use for a little bit, or it could be something that you put away. We started with David's Bachman Easy Track, something that's easily put away, taken apart and put away, is easy for a kid to do by themselves. And we had some other temporary layouts downstairs. Uh, one of my favorites was the one where we had an easy track loop and um, two other loops because we could run uh, multiple trains. Yeah, we had that one. That was the last temporary layout we had down there. The, we, there was one in between where we just had sectional atlas track on the floor. I think we had about 40 feet in total of track. But the one he's talking about, we basically put two tables together, put some foam on it so that we could use some track nails to attach to secure the track. And we had three loops. We had a loop of easy track in the middle, two loops on the outside. And an American Flyer track on top. That's right, the American Flyer train that we had just fixed. We put that on an upper level. I know a lot of times people say, oh, well, trains running in circles, it gets pretty boring. But I'll tell you what, when you're just getting going in model railroading, you're probably going to start with a layout that is a circle or an oval or something similar. And there's nothing wrong as long as you're getting the train running. And you can kind of imagine once you see it moving around, oh, maybe I want to put a city over here. So that's just part of the process, trying out different layouts and trying to figure out where things might go on that layout. The fourth thing in our list is to figure out what your goals are. Are you trying to model a specific location and trying to be as prototypical as possible? Or are you trying to do a freelance layout? We uh, personally have chosen to do more of a freelance layout because of space limitations, but you need to decide if that's important to you. To a lot of people, modeling a specific place is very important, and to others, they just want to have their own imaginary town. So you need to decide before you build something which one is important to you. Number five on our list. DCC or DC. 
I noticed David said DCC first because he's the one who convinced me to finally make the switch. And now that we're doing that, I can't believe we haven't done it sooner. So here's one of our old DC engines that is going to be converted. This is not the one I started the conversion project on, by the way. There's David's DC Thomas that we are also going to convert. And here is our DCC uh, Broadway Limited Union Pacific. Honestly, never thought that, that that would entertain me so much. Those kind of sounds, but they do. So you need to make that decision. The one thing I will say, obviously DCC, there's more features to them and they are more expensive. There are tons of DC, used DC engines and also uh, new as well in the market. So make that decision. If you go DC, you can always upgrade later. However, you will have to make some changes to your equipment and your locomotives. Number six on our list. Bench work. There are a lot of different options for styles of bench work that you can choose from. And it's going to come down to what you're comfortable with and what you're doing for your layout. What we ended up doing is going with two inch foam over half inch plywood. We're in a fairly live room in here with no carpet and we wanted to make sure that we dampened the sound as much as possible and the, the foam gives us some flexibility for modeling uh, scenery as well. Number seven on our list, track planning. So there's lots of ways that you can do this. You can do it with a pencil and a piece of paper. There's a lot of pieces of computer software and David can tell you I spent a lot of time in the month of January and February before we got started doing track planning. But David, what did we do up here before we built this bench work? Do you remember? Uh, we built uh, another layout to see how it would work out. Right, we built a temporary layout, which actually ended up being against a different wall in this space. But for, uh, for me personally, and I think it helped David as well, there's nothing like actually seeing on your bench work what the layout's going to look like even if it's temporary. We had, we had used different lumber that we had here. I'll put a link to that video uh, tour of that temporary layout in the description here. But you do need to do some kind of planning, whether or not it's, it's going to turn out exactly as you're planning. Are you using flex track? Or are you using sectional track? Just to see how it's going to fit in your space. Number eight on our list. Scenery. So, um, I noticed that there's no buffers here, um, and it, this really doesn't lead to anywhere. There's no trees, no, um, depots, no grass. Well, we, we'll have to add something, I guess. So, you also notice I didn't glue this down. Where David's standing right now, this cutout, this access point, we're going to have a removable piece here in case we need access to this track back here for some reason. But an important part of your layout is determining what you want to do for scenery. If you want to do scenery, I've seen plenty of layouts that are track only, and if that makes you happy, that's okay. And how detailed you want to get. I'm going to give an example of a YouTuber that I follow a lot, and his interest in the scenery part of it is probably way more intense than his actual interest in the trains. And I believe he had said in one of his videos that he basically has a couple of trains running on DC, just basically running around the layout. And that's Jason Jensen. I'm sure you guys are all familiar, most of you experienced YouTubers, you already know that name for modeling. So for him, the modeling is extremely important. Whereas for somebody else, they may want to have a few basic things. And again, it comes down to whether or not you're trying to be prototypical and model a specific place. Like, I really would be, um, have no clue how to um, put down every shrub precisely, so... Well, if you put it down precisely, it'd probably look unnatural, too. So that, that's part of the fun of it. And with the scenery, if you don't like it, it's fairly easy to just start over. So that's part of the fun of it. You decide how much time you want to put into the scenery and what you want it to look like. Number nine on our list. Have fun. I think that this is something that people, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? That's not prototypical. 
So? We, we don't have a 30-inch radius to run that, that passenger car around, David. We can't do that. Um, I don't care. Okay. And that's what it's about. Sometimes people get too hung up on prototype and, oh, you, it doesn't look good going around this curve or why do you have steam locomotives on with diesels in the modern era? I think the bottom line in model railroading, you need to figure out what interests you the most and pursue that. Don't listen to negativity. Don't listen to anyone who tells you Oh, well, you can't run that on that track. It doesn't look good around the curve. In most cases, there, there are some pieces of rolling stock and some locomotives that don't like 22-inch uh, curves radius. However, most things will handle it. Does it mean it's recommended? Not necessarily. However, you can't listen to negativity. I'm just going to share one quick story. We were at a train show in Plano last January and David was looking at some passenger cars and the guy very quickly assumed that we did not have the layout to run these and was very quick to tell David oh no you can't have you shouldn't buy you can't run that so don't listen to the negativity run what makes you happy and make sure it's make sure it will run on your track but run what makes you happy right son yeah. And that brings us to the last number in our list, number 10, which is, David? Running trains. So a lot of times people get frustrated because their layout's not done, or maybe because they have, they're have they in the middle of a project. But you need to remember, going back to number one on our list, the most important part of model railroading, in our opinion? Is running trains. Running trains. So it's good to take a break while you're working on the layout. It's not going to finish. And even a, a smaller layout like this isn't going to happen overnight. It's going to take some time. And we've already taken some breaks from doing work on the layout to just run trains. I've seen some pretty big model railroaders post on YouTube that they haven't run trains for six months or something like that. And honestly, I can't imagine maintaining interest in model trains if I couldn't run it for six months because of something else. So don't be afraid to take a break on the layout work and just have some fun and run trains until you're ready to work on the next project. So I want to thank you guys for watching this video today. Hope it helps you motiv motivate you to get started on your layout. If you're an experienced model railroader, I hope some of the things that we said today will help you encourage other people to get started on their model layout. So David, let's run a train. Thank you guys for watching and until next time. Signing off.